G'day guys and welcome to the Purebred Reds Adelaide United Fan TV. We're here at the Campbelltown City's uh, home ground to preview our FFA Cup uh, game tomorrow night against Brisbane Olympic. I'm here with former Adelaide United assistant coach Phil Stubbins from 2007 to 2011. Stubbsy, um, it's been a while since you're at the club. Uh, why don't you inform our viewers uh, just uh, what you've been doing since you left Adelaide. Uh, you've had quite the journeyman-like sort of coaching tenure since then. Um, yeah, just, just tell us what you've been up to. Obviously here now as the assistant at Campbelltown. Yeah, obviously here at Campbelltown and loving it. Um, good session tonight from the boys. We're looking forward to the game against Comets of the weekend. Um, so a good year. I think for me coming to Adelaide in 2007 was a bit of a leap of faith and coming to a different state, but you know, this is it's clearly now part and parcel of, of my home. And um, four and, I think four and a half years at the club, a great journey, the Champions League campaigns, um, World Club Cup, etc., grand finals. Um, and it was always a great place. A fantastic, vibrant supporter base that we've got and um, through an enjoyable journey. As we know in football, things come to an end and I left the club, I went to the Australian Institute of Sport and from there it was a bit of a crusade into, into Thailand. Um, a very good three years over there with, with pits and troughs and some, some great moments and some not so great. Mm -hmm. um, then back to Newcastle Jets, <coughs> taking an opportunity with Newcastle, which was a great chance and opportunity to get myself back involved in the A-League. It didn't quite work out that first year as, as I would have hoped but um, the second year wasn't available to me. And then I came back to Adelaide after that. Um, was fortunate enough to have been given the opportunity to take a program which was with the Australian College of Sport. Um, and for two years take a, a delivery of diplomas for, for young 18 year old boys. Um, for them to gain diplomas and a pathway to university. And that was great. A good opportunity for me I was to, to take a step back mm -hmm. and sort of find out how I can comprehensively put all of those experiences into a delivery um, and then I got an opportunity through a phone call with Joe Mullen who was a, a great friend of mine um, you know great coach in his own right and a terrific job here at Campbelltown but you know a great man and um, I've learned a lot from Joe this last year uh, and thoroughly enjoyed it and here we are we finished first on the ladder which is which is always nice absolutely and um, we've got an opportunity again to, to try and progress from this point on in the finals. Mm. Excellent stuff, Stubbsy. Well, uh, we'll get straight into it. So, uh, before we, uh, uh, actually, I'll, I'll just ask you that one. So, um, just question. tell us, um, you got a question? Thoughts on Schoolboy Soccer League. How will you go tomorrow in Intercol? Who's that by? Uh, Michael, Sp yeah. No, it's a good question. <clears throat> Look, it's, it's for me now four years at, at Prince Alfred College and uh, we haven't been beaten by St. Peter's to this point. So that's always a kiss of death, I'd probably say. But um, thoroughly enjoyed my time at, at Prince Alfred College. Um, again, this is the fourth intercol that we've been playing against St. Peter's. We're all looking forward to it. It's always a fantastic turnout. Um, and hopefully we get the chocolates at the end of the day. Awesome stuff. So, um, like, like we've previously mentioned, you're the assistant here at Campbelltown. Uh, talk to us about the amazingly successful season the club has had during 2019. Obviously, highlighted by a run in the FFA Cup and more recently, finishing top of the local MPOSA competition. I think for, for me it was a, an opportunity to come in and take a step back and watch somebody else work and that, that was Joe and then throughout the course of time just implement a few ideas and thoughts to Joe that hopefully helped and mm -hmm. um, playing a role here for, for, for Joe and the club and the boys. Um, it's been a fantastic year, he's got a great set of boys, he's in, the influence of the culture that's been put in place now is second to none and I mean that throughout all of the clubs that I've, I've been at. Um, so that's a credit to Joe and the club. The culture's terrific, and there's certainly an ethic amongst the group that they're all in it together. <coughs> and um, obviously we finished first. Mm. So there's a reason for that. And um, you know the training, everything that we've done throughout the course of time, the preparation, the content and the quality of training, not only from, from what Joe's put on and the staff and the influx of uh, input that you can give, but the players themselves, you know, they, they need to be congratulated. They're a great bunch. They work extremely hard for what they've got, and um, they've got their just rewards. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, so you've got comments at the SA Athletic Stadium in the first of a two-legged affair in the playoffs this Saturday. Um, how confident are you that Campbelltown will prevail against an informed mm. Comets side? Yeah, Comets, and to their credit, they, they gave us a bit of a touch-up in the last game over there at Santos. And <clears throat> speaking to Joe about previous results there, they've seemed to, to struggle a little bit. Um, I was just saying to the boys tonight, taking the session, um, 
I think we always speak about wanting to win the game, but I think we need to get a mindset of we're not going to lose the game. Mm -hmm. So that goes for each individual contest, challenge, every competitive moment in the game, we need to be up for that and uh, we really need to show our metal. If we can do that, then the quality of the team and the side hopefully takes effect and we can get a result. Yeah, well said. Um, so question gonna... question yeah. from Chris Adams. Main difference between Adelaide United Football Club and Jets, as in culture, atmosphere, fans, etc. Extensive question from Chris. Very good question. Um, look, I left Adelaide United. I didn't really want to leave the club, but um, things happen in football. And I think the success that we had at Adelaide United was, as again, on the back of a, a very, very good culture, um, a great set of players, a good core group of, of coaching staff that were all friends as well as, as, as decent coaches. And then the culture was terrific. Um, and certainly on those successful times that we had, yeah, there wasn't a better place to be. So taking all that, what I've just said, um, and this is no disrespect to Newcastle, but there was five years with no finals football. Um, and I sort of went in there on, on the back of trying to change things and try and take some of that experience of culture that we had at Adelaide to, to Jets. Um, it didn't quite work out. and I probably made some mistakes along the way in terms of um, discarding certain parts of the team um, in terms of player personnel. But I think as we progressed, there was definitely an influx and a moving forward uh, for the culture. But it wasn't the same. Um, and that's now I think they've, they've improved and they've picked up a little bit from, from where certainly I left off and the previous coaches before that. And um, I wish them well. It's a, it's a big club, a proud club at Newcastle. And I think potentially uh, a bit of a juggernaut, to be honest. But um, yeah, the biggest difference for me was, was the harmony and, and the quality of, of group that, that I was working with at Adelaide United. Thanks for the question, Chris. Um, so we are going to get into the preview, by the way, guys. I've uh, just got a few quick questions before we do. Uh, just centred on uh, the past, uh, Phil's past at Adelaide, um, as well as just Campbelltown and, and what Campbelltown are doing at the moment as a club. So uh, historically, this is a successful powerhouse in the state, um, but it's not all just about the seniors. Can you tell us what kind of junior structure is in place here at the club and how important the juniors are holistically in Campbelltown? Look, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, <clears throat> and I think that you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if, if we can improve our junior infrastructure and there's, there's things afoot in the background now at this point in time to try and make that happen, mm. I think there's been a focus at the club, certainly over a period of time, to have a, a strong, successful first team, and that's been achieved. Um, so now I think there's, a, there's definitely a shifting focus towards the junior development side of things, and um, the club are, will be pushing towards bringing a conveyor belt of players from their, their homegrown product and um, hopefully can step up in the years to come and be part of a game, a successful team. Yeah, absolutely, Phil. So I'm just going to take you back now to your time at Adelaide United. You've sort of glossed over it, but uh, anyhow, I'm just going to ask you to reflect on uh, your time there. So um, you're a long-standing assistant coach. You came in as uh, Aurelio Vidmar's first ever assistant. Uh, you had a, a challenging first season with him. Uh, however, you uh, went on to enjoy many successful times at the club. Uh, no doubt our exploits in Asia and the FIFA Club World Cup throughout the 2008-09 season are at the forefront of your Adelaide United memories. As many players I've interviewed often speak of how much of a central role you played in the day-to-day -day duties of coaching sessions. Uh, tell us about the highs and lows of the times at Adelaide United. Yeah, I came to Adelaide United. At, at, I'd never been an assistant coach. I was always a head coach. And, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have some very good roles and jobs in, in Victoria before I came over. Um, so you were uh, just prior to coming the Victoria State coach as well? That's correct, yep. yeah. And um, look, took, an, took the opportunity. Obviously, I played against Aurelio in Adelaide City, a very, very good side and a good player and a good person in Aurelio. And um, there was obviously things that I saw in the first year that um, Aurelio saw his way. But I think when we got to the end of that first campaign of 2007, there was a real coming together. There was a comprehensive delivery in terms of summary of what went wrong, what went right, how we can improve. and. Um, without going into the massive details of what we did, uh, there was a lot of work that was put into how we would progress. Um, and I think that that was obviously evident in the in the scoreboard and the results that we got and that Absolutely. pathway that we had uh, for 2008. So, certainly a very enjoyable journey, a different one for me coming over as the, as the assistant, mm -hmm. but Aurelio gave me a, a sort of a big rope and a big license to take a lot of the training sessions. And um, I was thankful and grateful for that. But I think at the end of 2007, going into 2008, we really began to work together. Uh, not only with Aurelio and myself, but Joe Mullen, who was then 
part of the youth system. Yep. Cal Viet, who's back at the club, who's a, a great guy. Peter Blazinchic, the goalkeeper coach. So everybody played a role, but I think we all played the role in a collective way. And there was a genuine spirit about how we went about our day-to-day -day duties. And I think that rubbed off into the, into the field. Yeah, no doubt at all, Phil. So um, we're going to jump straight into the preview for tomorrow night's FA Cup game. So we're set to lock horns with Brisbane Olympic tomorrow evening. The match kicks off at 7pm local time, which you can see live on Fox Sports. Phil, we know uh, we're coming off a comprehensive 5-2 win against Melbourne Knights uh, in the last round. I'm sure um, that's a club that's very familiar to you given the time you spent in Victoria. Yeah. Um, it was the first time uh, Gert Danver Bakes, uh, we saw Gert, Gert Danver Bakes team in a competitive outing. Uh, did you catch the game? And if so, what were your impressions of uh, the new look at Lake United? Look, I did, I saw it wasn't for its entirety, but I think they look very sharp. They've certainly got a decent cutting edge. Um, they won't be getting carried away, obviously state league football that they went against but Melbourne Knights as everyone knows has been a, a powerhouse themselves mm -hmm. so to go there and, and, and get the result that they did I think it sort of boards well for the season and campaign ahead scoring five goals against any team away from home is a difficult um, chance and an opportunity to actually grab which they did so I think everyone's looking forward to tomorrow night and what we can do but so far things look pretty good for them yeah, no doubt about it. Um, so, as for our opponents, Brisbane Olympic, they're also coming off a 5-2 win uh, against Bayswater City in their last match. But more importantly, it's their domestic form in the Queensland NPL, which should worry us, as they've scored a league-high 83 goals in the Queensland NPL, uh, and they currently sit fourth on the ladder there. Uh, with the fact they've scored so many goals this season, despite it being at a second-tier level, still worry Adelaide United going into this? Look, there's a real man to the competition. Yeah. And I think the... The problems that you can get in, in the A-League and, and obviously the Premier League teams coming into it is that if the Premier League team happens to, to score first, they get a real genuine boost from that. It's still pre-season for the A-League teams and then sometimes that plays into the hands of the NPL sides and um, I think if, if, if they get the opportunity to score first, it may be a difficult game for Adelaide. On the reverse side of that, if, if Adelaide score first and they're in good fashion and good form, then the confidence should, you know, showcase itself thereafter and uh, I'd say that they go on and win the game. Yeah, really, but it won't be easy. No, nah, well they never are are they? Um, really well summed up though. So for Adelaide, uh, the star off season capture Christian Opseth has again been ruled out. Um, however, as a result, we've just seen young striker Al Hassan Toure be promoted to the first team. Uh, Phil, you would have seen a lot of this young man running around uh, for Adelaide United's youth team in the NPL. Uh, how do you assess the decision to award him a first team bill off the back of just one competitive game from the same team? Great. Yeah. You know, we took. Um, I'll just speak about Matthew Leckie now. Uh, he was Australia's most, most valuable player from the Socceroos at the last World Cup. And, he was a guy that I went to watch in similar conditions to what we're in this environment tonight, mm -hmm. uh, playing for Bentley Greens or against Bentley Greens for Bulleen. And we took him on the back of that. Okay. And then we signed him, and then the rest is history. Absolutely. Look, and this, this boy Toure, he's, he's, I think he scored a goal against us, and um, you know he's a, he's a strong boy. And I think if you ignore youth, it's at your own peril. Sure. So if you've got the player there and he's, he's showing everything, and the coach feels potentially he can kick on then why not? Go yeah. for it. I couldn't agree more. Um, Brisbane Olympics coach Ben Kahn will be in a precarious position of having to prepare his part-time players for such an enormous one-off event. Uh, a position you and Joe Mullen were in a few weeks ago right at this ground against Melbourne City. Uh, you've coached at the highest level yourself uh, in the, and now you're in the NPL. Uh, tell us how you go about getting the players in the right frame of mind for this type of context. You don't need to. Yeah, they motivate themselves to. Basically, it. everyone's motivated to, to go out there and showcase every bit of potential that they think that they've got and it's, it's a great opportunity you know obviously all the eyes are on, on you as a club as a player I think the club needs to be commended Campbelltown City for, for how they prepared for the game and it was a it was a great showcase for mm. South Australian Absolutely. football and then um, we got beat by a good side a very good team but we were in the game for a very uh, very long period of the game um, so there's no need for, for the motivation if the tactics are right the players go out there with a good strong positive mindset Things work out when they, you know, the ball's round. It can bounce whichever way. At some point, you get yourselves a, an early goal, then who knows what can happen. So, motivation, you don't need to. And just on that tie here against, you've got a question. Yes, most talented and/or successful player you've ever coached. Who's that from? Chris Adams. Chris. Good on you, Chris. Um, 
Look, I've just mentioned Math Matthew Leckie was at the forefront of my thoughts, um, who, who's obviously done tremendously well for himself. He brought in as a 17 year old. There's been some terrific players. You know, Travis Dobb was a great captain, a great player at the club, um, Cassio, Marcus Flores. But there's also the other players that, that played the role, you know, your Paul Reeds and Eugene Galekovic was um, you know, a legend for the club. So there's been some great players. Ian Fife's done a tremendous job for us here, who was a big part of the club as well. Daniel Mallon. Daniel Mallon, outstanding. I think Daniel's probably playing his, his better football now at Campbelltown. So not that I'm trying to push him towards Adelaide United, but a terrific player, great person. Serge Van Dijk is a striker. I think there's too many to mention, so I'll sort of spread the love a little bit, I think, on that one. Yeah, no, we appreciate it. Um, just on that uh, contest against Melbourne City here in the last round of the FA Cup, um, obviously Melbourne City came out after that game. Eric Mombat saying uh, Campbelltown City is the best NPL team they've seen in Australia. What an accolade that is for the club. Oh, well, I mean, it's tremendous. I think there was certain periods of the game where it was a sloppy goal that we conceded to start the game. Then we got ourselves back into it. They scored a great second goal. But I think from that point on, to late in the game, most of the second half, we had a red hot crack. Mm -hmm. you know, on a different day, we might have got one or two goals, which sure. it wasn't to be. But I think in terms of feeling pleased with the result, although we lost, I think that's how everyone felt. Yeah, no, it was a great night all round. Um, having been an assistant manager for so many of those earlier years at Adelaide United, and now getting a taste, uh, and having gotten a taste of the FA Cup when you managed Newcastle in 2014, as well as now at an MPL level, do you believe, given there's such an appetite for the competition, that it came far too late within Australia's football landscape? It came too late. It's, however you want to judge that, it's here now. Mm -hmm. And it's a great competition. It's really given a, a new impetus into certainly NPL clubs wanting to get to the next level, wanting to showcase themselves against the top teams in the country. So for me, it's here. It's a vibrant competition and certainly one that everyone looks to. So I think we've got it. Let's uh, cherish it and let's, let's try and build on it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Phil, your tip for tomorrow evening's game? I've got to go with the Reds. Yeah, of course. How could we expect anything else? Before we wrap, uh, I've just got a few fan comments here. So, Conta Curious says, I remember, it's, it's a, a comment on a question. He says, I remember when Steve uh, and I flew to Townsville to watch North Queensland versus Adelaide. Phil was in charge of that game and we lost, embarrassingly. Phil ripped them a new one at full time, then started pointing to us. Slowly, the players approached and one by one apologised for the loss. Every player was made to do it. It's ha it's never happened since, and we've seen some pretty bad losses since. So uh, obviously, uh, you, you let the, the lads know that they definitely weren't on their game that day. Yeah, look, I think if supporters have travelled or prepared to, to, to pay the way to, to Townsville, and we didn't put in a good performance that night, um, why not go and show respect? Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, that's what happened. And uh, great supporters, by the way. Yeah, they are. So it's, yeah. it's been good knowing them, you know, all this time as well. So. Hello to the boys. <laughs> um, and uh, Michael Spiru, who's the second coach of St. Peter's, I should mention, says, who does Phil think will come out on top in the intercoast soccer between PAC and St. Peter's College? Um, and it's a big it's a big game, and obviously, as you mentioned, you are the head coach of PAC. Yeah, look, it's, as I said, it's been an enjoyable journey over there at PAC, and we'll be looking to, as I mentioned earlier, to get the result. Um, it'll be a competitive game, as they always are. Certainly a great occasion for both of the schools. So look, I'll just keep the cliche and the best team win. Absolutely, that's very respectable of you, Phil. Um, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you to Campbelltown, the club, for hosting us here. It's a fantastic venue. All the very best uh, for the rest of the season. We've got a lot to look forward to, not just uh, the NPL here, but the Australia Wide Comp as well. Um, it's going to be uh, a really exciting finish, and uh, we certainly hope Campbelltown get a result against Comets on Saturday at the SA Athletics Stadium. Phil, thanks so much for joining us today. Good on you, mate. No All the best. My pleasure. No worries. Thanks, guys. Cheers.